Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. For a limited time, you can use the link in the description to get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. I think big robots are okay. I watched a lot of big robot shows as a kid, but I wasn't really a super fan of any of them. I enjoyed Power Rangers, but I partially think that's just because my favorite color was blue and the Blue Ranger was named Billy. I think I watched Transformers, but I have to admit as a kid, whenever I heard the word Transformers, this is what came to mind. Well, until Michael Bay came around and showed me everything I will ever know about Transformers. And I kind of remember Beast Wars, but Beast Wars is probably why I thought Liger Zero from Zoids was a Transformer, uh, but clearly I was wrong. Zoids is a line of robotic model kits featuring many classic Zoids, such as Liger Zero, the Elephander, and this fella. With a long series of anime, the first to be dubbed in English was the second series, Zoids New Century, airing on Toonami in 2001. Zoids was a part of their regular lineup for a while. I have vague memories of watching Zoids. I recognize the 3D fights so vividly. They were cool. I I felt cool watching them. My friend had a cool Liger Zero toy. Zoids was cool, but I really couldn't tell a Zoid from a Zord. Uh, so uh, let's clear the air. I'm going to check out Zoids properly. Zoid started in 1982 as the brand Mecha Bonica in Japan. Created by Takara Tomy, the original Mecha Bonica line was a series of wind-up, buildable, adorable robots. When Mecha Bonica was brought to English-speaking territory, it was renamed Zoids, which were much more successful than the original line in Japan. Mecha Bonica was rebranded to Zoids in Japan and inspired by the success of Transformers, was given a larger story involving two differently colored warring factions, the Helic Republic and the Xenobot Empire. No more Star Wars! Over the years, Zoids moved away from their wind-up designs to battery-powered designs, which is where we see many of the iconic Zoids appear, which would carry forward into later series. Now, I've never built a model kit. Once as a kid, I was given a Red Eyes Black Dragon model kit, but I was very young, and I, I don't think anybody tried to explain to me what it was. So I just opened it, and I was like, what the f*** is this shit? Did they forget to build this thing? But I guess now is uh, as good of a time as ever to try to start building one. Here I got the Beast Liger, whoa. Whoa. The first Zoids anime, Chaotic Century, told the story of these warring factions and adapted the toys perfectly to screen as 3D models. While this is definitely the better remembered Zoids anime, the one I remember seeing a lot as a kid was definitely Zoids New Century, the second anime to be produced, but the first one to air on Toonami. Technically a sequel, Zoids New Century takes place 100 years after the war and features a group of misfit characters taking part in a tournament sporting events where Zoids fight each other. Zoids are wild biomechanic life forms. Zoid pilots will find a Zoid and enter the naturally occurring air conditioned leather interior in order to fight them in battle. Whoa, a DVD player. Zoid sentience is unclear, well, at least in this incarnation, because while Zoids are living, breathing animals, only certain Zoids can think for themselves and learn, apparently. I guess the wild animal aspect really only exists to explain why certain Zoids are rare and hard to come by. New Century follows Bitcloud, a Zoid part scavenger who is held prisoner by the Blitz team after he interrupts one of their official Zoid battles run by the Zoid Battle Commission. Bit is held captive, but he escapes after he's able to pilot the Liger Zero, a junk Zoid the Blitz team keeps around in case they need any extra parts. No one has been able to pilot Zero because Liger Zero won't allow them until Bit shows up. The Blitz team manager, Dr. Tauros, alongside his son, Leon Tauros, sees potential in Bit and offers him a spot on the team so Leon can finally pursue his dream of f***ing off for about 10 episodes before coming back to be Bit's rival. All right, so uh, first things first, why the name Bit? It's a fine name, but I mean... Watch where you're going, would you be run, bitch? Chill out, bitch. You should have thought of that. The Blitz team is a ragtag, in it for the money group of degenerates. When we meet Bit, we know he's a cool, slick jerk. Responsibility? No thanks, babe. I try to avoid that whenever I can. Lena is Tauros' daughter. She's a highly competitive Zoid pilot who let two guys she's not interested in fight over her just because she likes the chaos. She thinks she's worth it. My legendary beauty is what drives them to such desperate measures. And you know what? I respect the confidence. She is worth it. Hashtag... Let's bring back self-confidence to deal with the rest of this shit year. You know who's great? You're great. I respect you, and I recognize that you are doing your best right now. Keep your chin up, pal. <laughs> 
<laughs> then there's Brad, a work for hire cool guy who's just there to be cool. Jeremy, the dorky strategist who sometimes flies the flying zoid, and Dr. Tauros, the good humored scrappy manager of the Blitz team who gets really excited over building new zoids. But of course, the star of the show are the 3D action sequences that made zoids way past cool when I was a kid. Some of these sequences are still pretty incredible, but there's a childlike appeal to them that makes even the sillier looking shots fun. How are these ninja guys supposed to be intimidating when their zoid is just a gosh dang cutie? It's angry BJ. I like it when the pilots are talking to each other. The zoids like move their heads back and forth as if they're the ones doing the talking. Stop your whining session and get on you with it. Cocky little punk. But one part of the show that never fails to work is the awesome techno rock soundtrack, which hypes up even the most static looking shots. Look at them. They're blasting! It makes the repetitive sequences with Liger putting on special weapons and armor pretty exciting. While the show revolves around their matches for the Zoid Battle Commission, there's no real sense of progress or organization to the League. It's just kind of there to give everyone an excuse to fight Zoids. And... You are on your feet. Great, great, great. By episode 10, we've met pretty much every character in the show who all show up again continuously at one point or another. Halfway through the show, the Blitz team moves up in their league rank, but then they just continue to fight the same people over and over again who also moved up in rank. So what changed? They even suffer their first loss in episode 11, but nothing happens, except for Bit saying he'll stop messing around so much in battle, but he's just like, haha, whatever, this league has no rules. It's very episodic in nature, with many of the fights happening just because of a sitcom-esque setup with the show's ensemble. We meet all sorts of recurring characters. Naomi, the cool kid who pilots a Zoid with a sniper rifle in its tail. Uh, this just sort of reminds me of the worst part of owning a cat the anus. Jack, a super slick, cool Zoid mercenary who plays for many teams. He comes off like a jerk at first, but soon we see he has a softer, nicer side too. I would get excited when some of these characters show up, but whenever Harry shows up, I would just be waiting for the next episode. Why is there so much focus on this one note joke character? He likes Lena and won't leave her alone. That's the entirety of his character, but the Zoid's writing staff was like, oh, that's great. We should use that for half the episodes. However, the Blitz team also has to face off against the evil Team Rocket-esque backdraft group. These jerks will interrupt official Zoid Battle Commission fights to set up their own cooler fights. <sighs> because they think the Zoid's Battle Commission's rules are uh, too boring and they want to make things cool. They challenge the Blitz team with the promise of a larger cash prize offered by the Battle Commission under the conditions that they bet against their Zoids. The backdraft group even has some of their own side characters who all have different goals. Like some people just want to have a fun, edgy Zoid battle, but then there's Dr. Leon, an old friend of Dr. Tauros who has a bitter rivalry with him. Tauros puts up with him because he has a soft spot for a guy, but it's really strange and sort of oddly sweet. But what the f**k? Leon has a weird thing for Lena because he had a thing for her deceased mother. That's not very cool. Also, this is such an odd concept for a villain. Could you imagine if there was like an alternative edgy football league that would break into official NFL games and say, hey, get off the field, the Miami Dolphins. Ah, we're edgier, cooler. That would be so ridiculous but hit me up on Twitter if you're interested in getting this started. While the animation is impressive sometimes, other times it's just completely silly. Uh, like, is this supposed to be slow motion? I'm sorry, but elephant with a sword coming out of its trunk is never not going to be hilarious. Oh no, Liger Zero! None of the action ever communicates skill gaps. We're told a Zoid pilot is skilled and then the Blitz team will have a rough time at it, but there's nothing different about how Zoids move or how pilots act. Toward the end of the series, the final boss, Big powerful Zoid is introduced, and we're supposed to be in awe, but this is its opening move. <laughs> the, the, the most talented extreme Zoid, it, its strategy is just the right hook. Okay, there he is, Liger Zero. All done.
they really wanted to show off their new in 2002 3D. There's these like setup sequences that happen every single time they go into a Zoid battle and they're like over a minute and a half long. It happens before every single battle we get this epic grandiose music as the Blitz team's big old snail car unloads all of the Zoids. They armor up, they launch out, then the battle commission comes in and sets up the rules. Then we get shots of the other team and finally it's time for a fight. Ugh. But then here comes the backdraft group to knock down everything and f**k sh** up. They play that whole setup sequence just for the backdraft group to knock it down and have their own setup sequence. It really feels like... Over time, the characters did grow on me. The show has a fun sense of humor as well, which makes even some of the villains likable. I have to admit, Brad was kind of boring for a majority of the series, but then he stole this like sick, ultra powerful wolf zoid from the backdraft group. He makes it seem like he's gonna join their side. So they let him pilot the zoid, but then he just walks off with it. What are they gonna do? Fight their super ultra powerful Zoid that was made for the sole purpose of being unbeatable? Sick move, bro. And then there's Jamie, who's the timid strategist. What's the problem? Hurry and get it up to speed. I can't. But in one episode, he gets tired of being lame and decides to become cool. Right behind you. You're more talented than I would have expected, little lady. It, just like that. And Dr. Tauros is this big f***ing nerd, but he's an adorable big f***ing nerd. There's an episode where they go on vacation at the beach and Dr. Tauros just stays inside the big snail car throughout the entire weekend so he can build little tiny baby Zoid models. It's adorable. I can't swim, all right? What's the big deal? Once the characters grew on me, it was an enjoyable experience, but that didn't happen until like episode 20. I'm sure if I were to go back and rewatch it again, I might find more enjoyment out of it, but uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do that. Throughout the whole show, we hear the backdraft group thinks Liger Zero may be a special ultimate X Zoid. We learn it's special because unlike other Zoids, it can learn that idiot, meaning it can automatically be a Zoid it already thought and it'll get stronger the more in bits bond grows. What about you, Liger? Come on, partner. Tell me what you think. <laughs> Bit and Liger have this great dynamic. Bit will say something clever or thoughtful and Liger will just be like, uh, Yo, you feel the same, right, partner? A lot of the show seems to be about how Bit and the team need to become more skilled and strategize better in combat. But there's this moment where Leon returns and becomes a rival to Bit. They initially draw, but then Bit automatically wins their next match because Liger learned. Not even once. Bit doesn't actually have to become a better Zoids pilot. He just has to hug Liger more. How sweet. The show's final arc is a qualifying tournament for the Pro League. It ends with a climatic showdown between the backdraft group's ultimate exoid that they found underwater somewhere. Here specifically, the Blitz team wins and Bit and Liger decide to go have some fun adventures before the next season begins. Zoid's New Century is a repetitive, silly show, but it honestly has a lot of charm. Not every episode is a slam dunk. I like it enough. I just don't have too many in-depth thoughts about it. It was perfectly enjoyable. Imperfectly enjoyable. Zoid's is still around today with a new game that looks pretty cool right around the corner. I do want to start going back and looking at topics I already covered a little bit more, so I'll probably cycle back to Zoids sometime soonish because I really do want to watch Zoids Chaotic Century. But until then, I'm tired, I'm stressed, I'll see you soon. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is a great resource for anybody looking to expand their in-brain skill set encyclopedia. From creative to entrepreneurial skills, Skillshare has thousands of classes for the curious person. If you noticed the recent recent dramatic quality increase in my video quality, I recently got a new camera, which has gotten me recently curious to get back into photography. However, right now it's, it's easier to stay inside and learn more through Skillshare than it is to go out and plan actual photo shoots. So to satisfy this curiosity and hopefully learn some new stuff by the time I can go out and shoot, I've been going through the Instagram worthy photography class by Brandon Wolfell. I've seen so many of his photos all across the internet, so it's really cool to see a familiar your face teaching one of these classes. Watch out, Instagram. I'm gonna take Instagram by storm.
booty picks. No. With Skillshare Premium, you get access to Skillshare's entire library at just $10 a month. And for a limited time, you can use my link in the description to get a free trial of Skillshare Premium. So give it a try. It really does help out the channel. Like I got this camera with sponsorship money. So I do put it back into making my stuff better because I really do care. So thank you. And thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video.